What's good, everybody? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. I hope everybody's doing good. Had a great holidays. You know, I know everybody's tummy should be, you know, not as full by now with you the weekend. It's Monday. We're getting back to the regular schedule program. So I hope everybody's doing good. Today, we are joined by someone out of Tallahassee. She is the executive director of Ladies Learning to Lead out in Tallahassee, Florida. Her name is Fadrina Sutton. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm doing good. How was your holidays? It was great. It was great. I traveled. We were with family. It was about 18 of us total. Um, so it was a great time. And my mom made her famous dressing and sweet potato pie. Ooh, I still I still get hungry just hearing about what everybody made. So we can't, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop right there. I'll get hungry all over again. I ain't had lunch yet. I'll get hungry all over again. Uh-huh. Um, so I think the last time we, we, we kind of worked with y'all, maybe it was a couple of months ago, a little more closer towards summer slash fall. Uh, I know we don't have two, to support the career mentoring program, which provides professional development classes, field trips to local universities, and guest speakers for young ladies. Um, yes. I guess I would love to just touch in and see, you know, what, what has your organization, organization been doing lately? How's everything been going? We are doing the same thing. You know, we are continuing to um, serve young girls um, or young ladies throughout um, the state of Florida, which is one of our new things. We've kind of expanded for the year, Um, but we are continuing to pair these um, mentees with um, career mentors and college mentors. Um, I love that each girl gets two. So they get one to teach them, like, what does your next step look like? Mm -hmm. And then one that's going to show them their long range goals and kind of help them explore careers. So nice. that's what we've been working on, just continuing to um, provide those training activities and that career-focused mentoring. Lovely, lovely. I know I mentioned the grant a bit earlier uh, here a second ago too. So I was, I was kind of know like what doors or what, what kind of things that, that that grant opened for you um, with, with, with that? With that grant, what, what so doors? one of the things I, I just mentioned was that we are now statewide. So we started okay. in um, Tallahassee, Florida, the kind of, we call it our Big Bend area. It's about five counties. Um, but we are now with statewide coverage. We have staff in six of the major cities throughout um, Florida. And so that is just allowing us to expand um, our reach and um, be able to just help more girls. And so we're really excited um, about that opportunity to be in the um have staff like on the ground in these major cities so we're grateful for the grant um and that opportunity lovely that expansion is is, is so crucial as you saw them kind of start at one spot and then continue to grow more have an even bigger impact that that's that's lovely that's beautiful that's beautiful um yeah. i would love to i know we kind of been talking about the things that's been going on with the organization and things that you're working on but i would love to know is there anything um in particular, a bigger project or anything more, spe- or anything you know, special too that you have wor- have kind of in the works in the horizon um, that maybe viewers should be looking out for. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have our twelfth um, annual leadership conference that's that's normally held in May. Um, it's three days, two nights. It's on a college campus, so the girls get fully immersed in what freshman year would look like. They're staying nice. in the dorms and eating in the calf. And then we have mentors and speakers coming in from all over to talk about um, dressing for success. They do resume writing and mock interviews. We have a career mentor lunch. Um, and then we have different topical speakers that come in um, that share about Um, Like last year, we did something on a diversity panel. The year before, we talked about entrepreneurship. We talked about mental health. Um, And so we'll have those speakers coming in. And that program um, or the leadership conference is open to um, young ladies who are in our career mentoring program. But everyone actually is is able to attend that, whether they're in Florida or another state, they're able to come in um, and get that experience. And so that's something we're really excited about and what's what's our next big thing that's coming. Awesome. Oh, awesome. That sounds super exciting. That's going to be definitely an experience for those young ladies, most definitely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, now, another question, you know, there's so many, the work that you do is so impactful. The work that the whole program does, the organization does is so impactful. I mean, we talked about how important it is to go from, you know, being focused in one city to expanding to the rest of the state. Um, with all those programs just being so successful and having such an impact, um, what would you kind of say is one of uh, is like the most successful program or one of the programs that you maybe like take take more pride or, or just have more pride in and it's how you see it right. work and execute and, and why and why would it be that program? 
Yeah, so I think our longest running program is our annual leadership conference. So it was the the brainchild, the baby that sparked a lot of our other programming um, where we were seeing the students that one weekend a month and we were like, we need to see them more and more and more. And so that's how we added more programs. So I think what's most successful about the leadership conference is that um, one, the girls um, are not only inspired, but they're really equipped to leave that program and and do the thing right like so we have mentee I mean students who left and like started nonprofits they you know wanted to be leaders in their community so they're on um, boards and things of that nature as like a student and ambassador and things of that nature um, and so the thing that I also think makes it so impactful is that girl, the young ladies are able to start coming in in their sixth grade year um, and they can come back as many times as they want. So we've had several students who are with us four and five years. Um, and so that just longevity is one of the things that, again, makes it so successful and such an impactful program, just that they're getting that continued um, guidance, assistance, but also equip being equipped when they leave. I love that. I love that. I love that. And, you know, I know we talked about like the, that, that how, how successful and how impactful that program has been, but I have to ask, you know, I know that there's some, probably some more special moments too, or, or, or things that may have, you probably run into so many stories and so many kids and so, having so many impactful days that you've seen, but I would love to kind of know like, what is, what is one of your best examples of, you know, seeing how your organization has made a difference for you personally, or maybe one of the moments where, you know, you saw it affect somebody right there, then and there, or, you know, one of those moments, what would you say is one of those moments for you? You want me to pick one? I mean, (laughs) there's so many. Okay. So I think if I want to talk about something that impacted me personally, like Mm -hmm. my very first conference um, that I attended as a volunteer was back in like 2015. And I saw you know, a hundred plus girls, you know, their very first day, they're, they're kind of shy. They're just, you know, hi, how are you? You know, that type of thing. And the very first activity we do is a networking experience where we're teaching them how to say their name, how to greet the person next to them, how to start small talk, that type of thing. And so to see them on that first day where they only want to talk to people from their same school or, you know, et cetera, to them interacting with the rest of the students, to interacting with the adults that are um, there, the speakers that come in. Um, And I love that literally that very first conference, there was a student who ended up using her networking skills. We give them business cards. She networked with one of the speakers that came in who ended up being her mentor, you know, that following year. Um, And then she ended up doing an internship with that law office. And now, you know, like it has just opened so many doors for her. And like, I remember I was her group leader, you know what I mean? And like, I was just like, so excited for her that she like had like that next step that happened after the conference. Um, Something as far as like a girl that I I saw, um, again, probably that first year, I remember um, one of the students, Amaya, she came in, not necessarily shy, but, you know, just young, right? And so she's been with us a few years. And to have her last year come and be one of the speakers at the conference to really teach, to talk to the girls about how to, if you see a need, um, how to fill it, how to how to take it upon yourself to do the thing. And she started this project called the Girl Flow Project, which... Um, um, provides sanitary napkins, period products, and things like that for students on campus. And so she does a drive every year, and it's not just her high school. You know, she wasn't only concerned about her high school, but there are six high schools in Tallahassee, and she's expanded the product, the, that project to all six high schools. And so to, again, see her come in as a sixth or seventh grader, and now she's only a junior, and she's already done that, it's like... You know, like we're doing yeah. something, we're doing something, right? We're doing something. So they, they all girls have that spark. They really just need the equipment and then they need the um the belief from other adults that they can do the thing. They all come in with it. It's just our job to uncover it and then equip them to go out and do the thing. Most definitely. Oh man, I love that. Cause you know, it's just, it's just seeing your work work. It sounds so like mundane or it sounds so simple, but really just, everything you do, the people that you talk to, the people that you touch, like you don't know what that's going to do for them. You don't know what door that's going to open for them. You don't know, right. you know, what they are missing in their life and what that may have just unlocked for them or the blessing that it's become. And to see, you know, that is a quick time period, like from 
that time to then to be yeah. doing just three years she came in seventh grade i mean and then she spoke at our conference last year as as it was between her 10th and 11th grade year she's a she's a saw junior right now i know that has to mean so much for all the late like, young ladies watching her too because it's like if she's doing that in this time frame right. tell them what i could do or you know right. i think too right. a big thing is sometimes we can get caught up in like you know social media age time, you know, I, I, am I doing things on time? Am I making the most out of my time? Is it too late? Am I too late? But in reality, you know, all these young ladies, just, even today, even us, like we still have time to do it. All the things that you want to yeah. do or open new doors or new, new opportunities. So just to see that at a young age, someone who looks like you, someone you can really identify with doing these kind of things. It's, it's such a blessing. And it just does so much. It's like it's that work is yeah, very much needed. So that's super awesome. Oh, that's thank so you, thank you. And that's why we're so grateful um, to the Louder Than Voices um, grant for just funding organizations like us, you know what I mean? And other organizations that are that are being making an impact in the communities that they serve in in whatever way they're doing that. So we're just very grateful for that. I love it. I love it. Now, I could spend all day picking your brain, talking to you about everything and hearing the experiences, that, that, that kind of stuff just uh, it motivates me so much. But you know, I got to make sure I respect your time as well. I know you're a busy lady. We talked about it being Monday early, so it's a lot of moving going on. But um, I would love to kind of just um, lastly know, you know, are there any other areas or what are some areas of um, opportunity for your organization that people should know about? Um, the best area of opportunity really is as we're connecting not only statewide, so all throughout the state of Florida, but also um, other states that girls are able to participate in our programs from anywhere that mentors are able to participate in our program from anywhere because now we've launched it from um just a like a paper curriculum to our online learning platform and so they log into their course they can do mentoring sessions virtually job shadowing sessions virtually um and so we're not confined to just Tallahassee or just you know the state of Florida and so that's a real that's a big opportunity for um um mentors as well as potential mentees that may be hearing this or seeing this in you know California or Chicago or um wherever you may be awesome awesome well Padrina it's been amazing speaking with you Love to talk with you. I know you're gonna have a. I know you. Yeah, so we're getting back into the group of the week. So you know, make sure you lock in and then also get some rest at the same time. And um, thank you everybody for tuning into another episode of Community Voices. We appreciate y'all very much. Until the next episode, we'll see you next time.